It is September 1st, 2020, and we're going to see how good Autopilot is today. Now, a couple of things before we get started. I have the all-wheel drive uh, long-range model. I'm on the, well, not quite the latest update. I'm on 2020.32.3, which is the one that most people have right now. And for those of you who are new to Teslas, let me explain to you how you know how long the car has been in autopilot. You see there's a lot of things going on here on my dash. Let me just get my speed up to where I want it here. What we have here is you got a blue line here and you got a blue steering wheel there and you got a blue uh, ring around the back sign. So these two here are what mean you're in autopilot. So as long as you see this blue line here, that means I have not hit the brake pedal, nor have I used the steering wheel. So as long as those two things are blue, you know that my car has not come out of autopilot. It's done everything on its own. The only thing you might sometimes see me do is press the, uh, the, the blinker button here, which will make the car get over a lane or something if I want it to. But it's gonna do most of it all on its own. So what the drive is today is how good is autopilot in 2020 and we're gonna see how far how long the car can go we've got 46 miles to my destination we're gonna do it all in fast forward I'll talk to you guys at the end let's do this oh and I'll throw this in as well you'll see on the top here you've got a counter for how many times I had to interact with autopilot let's just see how many times this actually happens along this journey I'm guessing it's gonna be pretty good we've got all kinds now of different types of freeways, highways, intercity driving. We've got it all on this trip. So we're gonna just see how great this is. I'm, like I said, I'm gonna keep it in full self, uh, full self drive. Well, it is gonna be full self drive, but I'm also going to be just doing kind of voiceover as we go through this, talking about different things as they come up. But we're gonna, again, we're gonna keep it in fast forward so it makes this video not very long. Now, one more thing for those of you who are new to the Tesla autopilot system. You do see my hand is on the wheel. So just to save all the comments down below that says, oh, we see your hand on the wheel. You have to keep your hand on the wheel for autopilot to stay engaged. It's a safety feature right now. Every 30 seconds, it makes me, uh, you know, put a little bit of pressure on the wheel so it knows I'm still awake, that I'm still in the car, I'm still in the driver's seat, all of that. So my hand is sitting right here right now. Um, it doesn't have to be, but just as we're driving along here, you'll see a little, uh, sometimes a message pop up right here. And um, that is because it's, I don't have enough pressure on the wheel. But like I said, if I do more than just touch the wheel, it'll turn off autopilot and you'll see the little blue lines disappear. And that will happen sometimes on this journey. And we're gonna then count those as uh, times I had to interact. I mean, every time I even use the blinker, we're gonna count those as times I had to interact. And we're just gonna see just can this car drive me there mostly by itself with, within the means of what it's able to actually do at this point. One thing that's really nice about how autopilot is handling merges like this is that it could see that this car in front of us is going too slow and, and change lanes right here, but it doesn't. And that's good because in the future, we're going to need to be in this left-hand lane, whereas normally on the freeway, you would, while in Navigate and Autopilot, which it's in right now, you would, uh, would have changed lanes to keep up the max speed, which is still at 65. So the fact that it knows to stay over here in this left lane is very intuitive, and uh, it's just a good uh, sign that uh, you know they, they are getting a lot of these more complicated situations figured out. So here's what I am, oh, my not. first time I am actually going to be backing off here. And that is because this great big semi needed to get over. The car had no idea uh, mm -hmm. that it was going to be coming over. And so that is our, uh, a knock that we did have to, uh, that we are gonna put against the autopilot of times I had to interact. I don't know how they're gonna figure that out. The guy had his blinker on, but he was right beside me. Autopilot, the way it's designed, is it doesn't get over or let someone in unless it sees it start to come over into the lane or cross the lane. And uh, or if it's, you see it coming at an angle, like, like right now it's hitting the brakes because I saw that semi truck um, over on the left. You saw it turn red there for a split second. Um, but that is that. So I don't know how it's going to learn to handle that. They'll figure it out. But that, that's that's what I, that's the first time now that I've I've had a touch autopilot since we got uh, into the car. So you know that is a little interesting there. So this is another time that we're gonna have an issue with autopilot because it's not gonna get over. It's actually gonna keep me in this lane. So you're gonna see here, I'm gonna to have to tell it again to get over and here we are in a construction. Oh, it's gonna do it right now anyway. But here's the thing, I'm pretty sure it's doing it right now because of the slow moving vehicle because we're not going five under the speed limit. And it did actually just cancel uh, that lane change on its own. So we gotta watch really close here. Okay, here it comes back up again. Uh, but you know, I it, this it's not getting me over in this section because of it being in an X only lane. It's getting me over simply because of going too slow. And it can tell uh, 
that, yeah, so here we go. Come on now. Let's, so is it going to go? So if I, you know, finally I ended up did getting me over there um, and we crossed that line. But again, if there was no one in that lane right there uh, to, to slow me down to get over, the car would have actually stayed in that exit only lane because that's something that it still has issues with. In fact, a lot of times once you pass a car, kind of like the situation we were in back there, uh, it'll actually get back over again into the, uh, the turn lane. Uh, or the exit lane when it shouldn't. It should have stayed, you know, in the non-exit only lane. So just one of those things that I've been talking about for almost eight months that it just they don't seem to be putting really any work into uh, knowing that that lane is exiting. The other thing too you notice is when you've got a lane coming up, um, like right now it is changing lanes, which, you know, this, when it does something like it's doing right now, it really makes me second guess everything I just said because we are far away from all those cars way up there when it decided to change lanes there. And it was, that was an exit lane that we were riding in that it was saying that in the future that lane is going to be, you know, taking a different direction. So it did just get over there, but I, you know, it's, it's very inconsistent. That's the problem to really know if it actually does. Actually, maybe this is a great time for you guys to chime in um, from all around the world, wherever you guys are, you know, in the US, UK, wherever. Do you guys notice that when you get into an exit only lane, does it uh, get over a lane? Or when you're coming up to a, a spot where people are merging on, does it pull over to leave them space? Because either of those things would have explained why it just got over right there. Um, I'd love to believe it's because they finally, in this latest update, which this is the first time I'm testing it, um, fixed it so you don't drive in an X only lane. It's because so far it's twice in a row done it. I just don't know exactly why, if that really was the reason or not. So we'll keep watching. By the way, we're heading into an area right now where uh, it has a terrible time with the map. And um, see how I noticed uh, that car that got over in front of us pulled right in front of us there. The car saw that guy getting over quite a way in advance and uh, then pulled over into the faster lane, which was very accurate, very very like a normal driver would have done. And you can see, I had, since that one time, I still have interacted with the car, but you would think that I had. The way it was driving, the way it was letting the cars in uh, and all that, you would think that I was actually driving the car that a person was just with the way it was handling things. And uh, so I have my car set on average lane change, so it's not on Mad Max, but it's acting very average, very normal. I'm actually extremely impressed. Were this a, a rate this drive challenge, um, you know, I would have been, you know, putting this right at a very high spot. But see right here, uh, we're hitting the brakes and there, there's no reason for that. And so we have a lot of different spots on this drive where um, through this area right here where it's always had these challenges. And I've slowed the video down a little bit here so you guys can really see all the stuff that's going on with the car. Uh, but this has actually been a success. Usually right here it'll lose the map and will disappear, end up on a different road. I've had it go down at 35 miles an hour in a 60, uh, or it tried to, I had to massively interact with it. But this time I haven't done anything. I had a slight little bit of slowing down, but then it fixed itself really well. So, I mean, I guess they must have fixed the mapping issue or they've just taught it to listen to the road more than just the map. I'm not really sure how they solved that. But yeah, last time we went through there, you look back to that video, it was like very scary. So that was, I'm, that was awesome. I'm very impressed with that. And one thing that the car has got to realize is that we've got in one and a half miles up here, we got to take another exit onto another uh, highway, Highway 16. We, we got to get over four lanes. We have about a you know mile and a half to do it. So within a mile is when it will start usually getting over. Um, it shouldn't be hanging over in the fast lane really anyway. So we're curious to see what it actually ends up doing through here. So like a normal person would be getting over about right now, uh, back where there was that big opening spot to get ready for the exit. We have less than a mile here, uh, but it's gonna keep pushing it for some reason, even though we do need to take this exit now on 0.7 miles. All right, I'm gonna slow it down here to show you guys again that it's, it wants us to get over into the far right lane. There we go, there's all the lane changes we want. We gotta get over all the way, all the way over. So let's see how fast it does this. We have 0.3 miles left. Um, there was the first one. It should be giving us a couple more here. We now have 0.2 miles. Are we gonna make it? We need to go like right here. Why are we not? Go, 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 go. Yeah, see, I had to uh, massively take over there. You guys see that? That was terrible. It literally missed that exit completely right there. I'll put it back in autopilot. It completely missed that exit 
and uh, epic fail right there for sure. I let that thing go to the absolute extreme, cut back over three lanes to get it gone. I mean, I couldn't have given it more opportunity right there to get over. So that was uh, that was a huge fail um, on that. And I've actually never seen it fail with merging onto another freeway before. It's very basic. It's been doing that for a year. Or uh, not a quite a year. Let's say six, six, seven months. It's been doing that, um, literally flawlessly. So that was actually really sad to see. Um, and I don't know. Have you guys noticed that in the latest update that it's having that issue? I did hear someone say something about that it no longer or it's having issues with that. But I'm curious to see if you guys have noticed that as well. We'll just see what happens the rest of the drive. So very strange right there. The car decided to hone in uh, back there on that semi that was beside us. It didn't even cross the line, but decided to just really obsess over it and was backing it down to five miles an hour. So that is another time when I had to interact um, by pressing on the accelerator. You guys couldn't see that. Uh, it didn't turn off autopilot, but I did have to tell the car uh, to go faster through that section, which is a little strange. So I haven't really seen it do that before either, which, you know, is all that uh, great. So what's coming up now is we've got something called the narrow bridge. And this bridge is narrow. It's gonna give Autopilot a lot of fun testing to see how well it keeps itself in its line. I've been having some issues with that um, on some of the more windy, tighter roads. But uh, coming up on this bridge here, we're not supposed to change lanes. So what I'm gonna be watching for is will the car try and change lanes on a bridge? Cause that's a big no-no. I wanna slow it down right here to watch this because you can see that it wants me to change lanes here right in the middle of this bridge, dead center. Um, but is it going to actually attempt it? That's the question. It wants to, and I think it's only wanting to do it because we're, um, it wants to, well, we're not even in the fast lane. So I don't know why it's wanting to change lanes. We're not slowing down because of any other car, but it's not actually doing it. So we're going to go ahead and not knock the car for it, but it looks like it'll do it as soon as we get to the other side. Yep. Right here. We slow down to change lanes right into a right lane ends, uh, <laughs> sign, uh, right at the very end of the bridge. So, I, I, I don't, this is again, it's, it's not able to predict what lanes are coming up ahead. So kind of like the turn the lane, it just sort of gets over, but it doesn't know what other kind of lane is coming up. Um, and then it's gonna just merge back in. Still, Whoa! To get up. You guys see that? Okay, let's talk about what just happened right there. The car, uh, I think it saw the shadow on the ground. I've never seen it do that before, ever. There was no cars in front of me, nothing above me, no overpass. The car just hit the brakes. Uh, we went down, I, I, you guys would have seen it there. I think it was like five miles an hour, like instantly, but that was a definite brake check. That was the first brake check we've got so far. I didn't, still didn't do anything. The car fixed itself and pulled out of it pretty quick. But um, yeah, that was the first kind of brake check we've seen on this drive so far in about 35 miles. So now coming up right here, I was a little bit nervous because the last time we did some kind of an automatic exit or merge, it didn't work. But as you can see here, it, it does. And it goes right on past, right up the exit and no problem there. So no issues taking exits. It's more just the merge that it had an issue with back there. So here's where I'm going to actually take over again because we're back on the inner city streets now. So the car is not able to drive on its own. And so this is where I'm going to stop hurting it for actually, you know, me interacting with the car. When you really think about what just happened there, I went over 50 miles and only had to interact less than five times with the car. Yes, those couple times were in some cases a little extreme, but they were still very minimal and the car drove me there almost entirely by itself. Just think about when we can do this in the inner city as well, how great that's gonna be. Hope you guys enjoy the drive, we'll see you next time.